Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is Cartomancy Part 2. Hey, a while back I did a review for Cartomancy, or Cartomancy, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, and uh, it did really well, a lot of people liked it. And so I've been getting questions periodically about uh, how to do cardomancy and or how to improve uh, their own cardomancy or where I got my information from and I just wanted to like put some more stuff out there give you some more information if you're into card reading or you want to get into playing card reading hey a little bit about cartomancy cartomancy means fortune telling and it's done with a standard deck of playing cards so, and this form of divination was spread across 14th century Europe by uh, gypsies and it can be traced back uh, all the way to the Middle East the original cards may have been developed in 10th century China, but their true origins are lost to history. Uh, gypsy travelers and other early practitioners were known as cardomancers or cartomancers or card readers, and they have been giving their readings to their seekers since the beginning of time. And let me just start off by saying, I understand, okay? I understand your frustration. I understand the struggles you're feeling right now because number one, you're like, well, why do I want to use playing cards when playing cards don't necessarily have pictures? You know, tarot cards would be so much easier to read because you can look at the card and there's so much to interpret and, you know, you know a spot card like a five of clubs, you know, what do I get from that? And so it might seem that tarot uh, is easier to do, okay? Uh, second, there's a lot of definitions out there. You know, you could spend a lot of time looking up various definitions, looking at different lists uh, and, and getting conflicting uh, things in your head. And you're like, well, this guy says this and this gal says this, you know, who do I believe? So there's, there's that confusion out there. You know, everyone, everyone says something different. Um, just to address those two things, uh, first of all, I would say I love using playing cards, okay? I love using playing cards because of a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm able to give the cards to the spectator and they're able to shuffle, okay? Tarot cards are large and they're, always, they're not always made out of really well-made material. They're almost like slippery cardboard that doesn't have a surface. Uh, I don't really love tarot card printers. Uh, people that make c playing cards, though, spend a lot of time and energy uh, trying to make playing cards easy to shuffle and easy to handle. And so, when I'm able to give the spectator uh, the cards and let them shuffle, it becomes instantly more personable. You know, they shuffle the cards and then I take them back and do the reading. So then it, it just makes more sense that, you know, like, they had it, they touched it, they manipulated it, I didn't. And so, and then on top of that, you know, the cards are smaller, they're easier to shuffle, they're also more familiar. Your average layperson has never even seen a deck of tarot cards. And when you say, oh, this is that card and it means this, or this is the towers, or this is the lovers, they don't know, they're just taking your word for it. But when they see the clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds in the courts, this is something that's calming and reassuring and like, ah, oh, yes, you know, my grandmother plays hearts or bridge, or I've seen cards before, I've held cards before, I've played poker. You know, this is a familiar thing and you do want your spectator to feel reassured and calm and not like, oh, I'm getting into witchcraft now, you know. I think cards are just so much more familiar and uh, there's definitely an advantage there. Also, you know, I would say get a fun deck. Don't, you don't have to go to Walmart and get a deck of cards off the shelf. There's tons of avenues out there to get uh, playing cards that are just more adapt to what you're trying to do. I mean, there's cards out there with really cool faces really cool court cards, like medieval courts, or Egyptian, or nature, right? Or you could get ones that have really cool back uh, designs, things that have like the all-seeing eye, or things from mythology. There's lots of different decks out there that could breathe a little bit of fantasy or mysticism. You don't need to use tarot. Uh, as far as the, the question about, well, you know, everybody says something different. What, how do I find uh, definitions for the cards that I like? It's just up to you. Like, just you know what it, it what it is is it's finding that find one list and just stick with it. Don't look. Don't keep looking. You know. Once you find a definition that you like, uh, you know. In my past video, I I gave you a definition of every single card in the deck. If you like that one, just stick with it. Don't keep looking. Don't listen to what other people are saying because what you need to do now is get a list 
and remember it. You need to get a master list and commit it to memory. That's your first step, okay? So find that list, whatever it is. Use mine, don't use mine. Find a list, stick to it, and then move on from there. Don't become so overwhelmed with all of the information that's out there. Don't try to put together your own list. You know, just find a list out there that works for you and just stick to it. All right, so here are a couple ways to do a reading, okay? Uh, and, and really, I'm just gonna give you a really quick way just to kind of push you, just to kind of get you started. Uh, number one, there's, you can do a single card, okay? You can draw a single card, and you can have your spectator do this. They can shuffle, and they can draw the card. It's so much easier for them to do it, you know, and them to feel like there's something personal there. And I would call this a quick answer. It's a question and a quick answer. So they ask the question, shuffle the cards and draw one answer and then you interpret it, okay? Actually, I think those are harder to do. It's harder to do a single card because so often I think the cards play off of each other. They, you use them in connection with each other. You pair them together. And so I think single readings are hard to do. If you want to learn to do this, then as a practice, as a practice, I would do a daily draw. Now a daily draw is three cards, okay? So shuffle the cards, you draw three cards, and then you just do a reading. You don't need to ask a question. You don't need to be thinking about anything in particular. Just draw three cards and do a reading. And I'll get into a little bit about how to do a daily draw in just a second. The other, th the other way you can do a reading for someone is a little bit bigger, uh, and that would be a past, present, future reading, and that would be a nine card spread of three rows. So again, it's gonna be just like the daily draw where you have three cards across, but then you do it three times, and you do your top row uh, for a past reading, you do your middle row for a present reading, and then you do your bottom row for a future reading. And then lastly, there's the gypsy web. Now the gypsy web is three rows of seven cards. So it's 21 cards. Uh, you could even look out on the internet. There's a lot of uh, uh, numerology stuff about the number 21 or the number nine or the number three. Uh, there, there's things out there you can find and that might help you uh, with your readings. But then I think the 21 card spread is, is, is massive, it's intense. <laughs> All right, so just to go back real quick um, to touch on some of the ways that you could do a reading. So if you're doing a reading, the first thing you should do is lock into a system of what you want to associate the different suits with, okay? You have to think of each card as broken down into two categories. There's suit, and then there's numeric, okay? There's the indice in the corner. That would be ace through king, right, obviously. And then there's your four suits. Now, your suits are represented as hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Uh, hearts, for me, represent issues regarding with emotion. Okay, and the home, that's very easy for you to remember, right? Uh, diamonds, those are work-related or they deal with things of the house, okay? So like you would think of, think of a mom with diamonds, okay? Your mom is a diamond because she, you, she's awesome. And your mom was either a homemaker, right? Or she had a job, okay? And so that's how you want to think of diamonds. It's something that is work in the home or work in the business world. Then you have clubs, okay? Clubs are all about money and finances, okay? That is all income, money-related things. And then the spades, uh, those indicate roadblocks or difficulties or problems, okay? So, like I said before, rather than take the cards one by one, we're gonna use them in connection with one another. So we're gonna do a triad, we're gonna do a group of three, we're gonna do a daily draw, okay? So you draw your three cards out, and then you're gonna read from left to right, just like you would read a sentence. And this is a very useful exercise for practicing card pairing. Uh, when you're enjoying your morning cup of coffee or tea before you start your day, you can ask the cards or uh, you know, a, a, whatever you want, uh, a question or something that you need to be more mindful of during the day. Uh, and then you draw these three cards and then you interpret the cards in pairs, in groupings. And then you just write down uh, what you came up with, write down what you saw or what you read. And then use this as an exercise um, every single day until you get a little bit uh, better and better at it. Okay, so you have your three cards down and I've got three cards here in front of you. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna read the suit, okay? And then you're gonna read the numeric in the corner, okay? And like I said, you're gonna start from left to right and then go across and then you're gonna marry those two together. So let's say your first card is the ace of spades. Now spades, we said earlier, was troubles or worry, okay? And ace, because it's a number one, you can remember that aces deal with beginnings or endings, okay? They are the start or the finish, just like the ace is either the weakest or strongest card in the deck. So right away you know that this is something to do with a worry or a trouble or some sort of roadblock, and it's beginning or it's ending, okay? And then you pair that with the card next to it. The card next to it is the 10 of hearts, so hearts is your 
concerns, feelings, emotions, love, right? And the number 10 card, the 10 spot, uh, deals with achievement or goals or success. So right away, within these first two cards, you notice that you have the beginning or the ending of some sort of trouble having to deal with a successful love relationship. Then you're gonna impact that with the next card. Here you have the Jack of Diamonds. Diamonds can be work-related things, like I said, or things around the home. And the Jack sometimes represents a family member. So look what happens when you group all three of those together. You have the beginning or ending of some sort of trouble having to deal with a successful love relationship, more than likely in the home, more than likely with a family member. And this is where you would ask, you know, are you married? Is there some sort of issue between you and your spouse? And then bam, there you go. There you have a reading. All right, so I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that pairs well with the earlier video. And if you haven't watched my earlier video, go out and check that one out as well. I'll put the link below in the description. I am not at all by any means a card reader or an expert on card reading or cartomancy. Or this is not what I do for a living. I just throw this out there because I am a card aficionado and I like to help people with their questions about cards. So I hope that helps. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.